اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله peace upon all of you everywhere I want to welcome all of you here the my dear professor and my dear colleagues and our valuable guest speaker and all audience today in Hussam Ziyadah Grand Round Zoom meeting room which is conducting uh, uh, meetings about the cornea, cataract, and refractive surgery subjects. And today, we are gonna talk about one of the the basic and the most important subject in the corneal surgery, which is the penetrating keratoplasty. The the basic and advanced uh, subjects about this uh, technique, and we will go in this sequence. We will start about the pre-operative evaluation and indications for the PK. Uh, and this talk will be given by my dear colleague, Dr. Hatim Sami, lecturer of ophthalmology at Azhar University, and one of the members of the cornea unit in our university too. Then we will go to our professor and our head, the head of the department of ophthalmology at Azhar University, and the godfather of the corneal, the corneal surgery for all of us, uh, Professor Mahmoud Ismail. He will talk today about the refractive keratoplasty, how to do it as a refractive surgery, and how to, uh, to do the best in all steps to get the best refractive outcome uh, in uh, the pretreating keratoplasty. Then, then we will jump to the advances uh, of the keratoplasty uh, with Dr. Asad Noor Eddin, the assistant professor of ophthalmology at Azhar University. Uh, he will talk about the femtosecond assisted PK or penetrating keratoplasty and uh, the tips and tricks of this technique versus the conventional one. Then I will come, I will come over, or I will run over. The, 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 common, the common complications of the penetrating keratoplasty, either the intraoperative or the, post, or the postoperative complications, and how to, how to manage it properly. Uh, I'm Hossam Ziada, Assistant Professor of Thalmology at Azhar University, too. Then we will go finally to the, the fruitful uh, lecture with our dear guest speaker. Uh, do professor Dr. Gustavo Victor, Professor of Ophthalmology, uh, Sao Paulo University, Brazil, and he he um, he had the postdoctoral uh, fellowships in both Sao Paulo University and the Moorfield University, United Kingdom, and his very talented and brilliant corneal surgeon. Uh, he will give us two talks, one about the keratoprothesis as an alternative in cases who are not candid for the PK and then how to reshape the, uh, the severe, severely irregular cornea by use of some technique. He will talk and show it to us. Thank you, my, my dear colleagues and my dear professors. And uh, I may ask Dr. Hatim Sami to share his screen to start his presentation, please. Okay, this is it okay now shared? Yes, I can see it. Okay. First of all, I am so happy to meet you all, and it is about to be with my pioneer professors and doctors. And for inviting me, we'll talk today about penetrating keratoplasty indications and the operative evaluation. As we know, corneal transplantation is an operation in which abnormal host cornea is replaced by healthy donor cornea. We have penetrating keratoplasty, full sickness keratoplasty, and lamella keratoplasty. We have first the penetrating keratoplasty done with thrombicerm in 19.06. And the cornea graft was successful for about 18 months. Indications of corneal uh, keratoplasty include optical, tonic, therapeutic, cosmetic. 
Optical indication is by obtaining a clear visual access for visual rehabilitation. This is the main aim. Tectonic keratoplasty is only for preserving the corneal integrity. Therapeutic keratoplasty is only for moving the infected cornea, not responsive to medical treatment. Cosmetic keratoplasty is only to improve the appearance of the arm. So, optical keratoplasty is done in keratoconus, corneal scar, degenerations, and dystrophies, epicic or sulfacic polar keratopathy, secondary grafting after rejection. Tectonic indications for corneal perforation, dysmetocel, and corneal stromal thinning. Therapeutic indications, as we told before, for failing medical treatment for corneal infection. Cosmetic only for the appearance of the arm. Mm -hmm. When we came to the preoperative preparation for a case of keratoplasty, we have the operative evaluation and patient counseling. The operative evaluation include history, examination, and investigation. History, we have first medical history for chronic disease such as diabetes, hypertension should be controlled the operative current medication or allergy to any specific agent. Social history, which we should be sure that the patient will adhere to the post-operative regimen very well because this is very important in keratoblasty. Of thermic history, we should have a history of any amblyopia, macular degeneration, glaucoma, or other optic neuropathy which will also will, uh, affect the visual prognosis. History of various intraocular surgery. Then we will go for examination. First, we'll go for visual active. Visual active, as we know, but if we have a patient with visual active perception or have perception of life, we have to check for light projection in order to check the integrity of the retina. We have to examine the pupil for exclusion of afferent pupillary defect associated with optic neuropathy. We have to examine for color vision assessment using a Shahara color or any other uh, test for exclusion of optic neuropathy. State lamp examination, we'll talk about. Tonometry, the best method for assessment of intraocular pressure in cases of abnormal cornea is by tonopen because it doesn't depend on corneal visibility. And finally, fundus examination. When we are going to do state lamp examination, we are going to examine the eyelid. We should search for any condition that will affect ocular surface integrity, as the cases, entropion, coloboma, lagosalmos, any of these must be managed by the Tear evaluation, we know that the right eye is one of the risk factors for cornea rejection post -obit. Conjunctiva as recurrent or progressive cornea inflam conjunctival inflammation is also a poor prognostic factor. Tim, uh, uh, please, just one second. Okay. Uh, I, want, I want to check again. Everybody can see the screen of Dr. Hatim? Dr. Asad? Mm, come on. Okay. You, you can see the screen well? Yes, yes. Is there any? Okay. I think Dr. Mahmoud told me that he cannot see the screen, so I, will, I, I, I wanted to check. Yeah, okay, okay, go. Excuse me, Hatem, I'm sorry. Yeah, re 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 resume again. Okay. We we'll go for uh, anterior chamber and iris evaluation. We have to check that there is no anterior synechia because it is a very, a very, very difficult situation intraoperatively. We have to maintain a good anterior chamber intraoperatively. And because this is very well for corneal prognosis or for successful graft, still synechia carry a guard prognosis as regard to intraocular pressure. We have to check for the lens. If there is cataract, so we know that we need a triple procedure cataract extraction, interocular lens implantation, and the keratoblasty. And in this situation, we have some difficulty regarding IOL calculation. Because if there is a corneal obesity or a result of normal cornea, we can't have a good keratometry uh, reading. In this case, we depend on key reading of the other eye or standard key reading of 44 or 40C. Second thing about the lens, if the case is pseudophagic, do we need for IOL exchange in case of anterior chamber IOL and this caused pseudophagic bolus keratopathy? Or the case is a phagic and we need to implant a secondary IOL? And this is very important because if there is any vitreous in the anterior chamber, or can carry a bad prognostic factor for keratoblasty. 
investigation. We only do investigation in case of totally opaque cornea. In this case, we need P-scan ultrasound to check for posterior segment is healthy and nothing abnormal. We need ultrasound by microscopy to check for the anterior segment if there's abnormal angle of there is anterior synechia. We need uh, VEB and ERG in case of pediatric cases. And finally, some surgeons need for investigation of corneal vascularization. When do we know investigation for corneal vascularization? Two methods, either invasive method as fluorescein and geography or non-invasive method as OCT and geography, optical coins and geography. Fluorescein and geography has the advantage of delineating corneal vascularization, which is not apparent clinically due to the presence of ASCAB, and it is very helpful to establishing the approximate age of corneal vascularization. What do we mean by that? We mean this is which are developed more recently. How can we know that more younger vessels leak more than mature vessels? And this will be very important later in case of uh, management of this uh, new vascularization be over. Finally, differentiating the affluent from the affluent vessels in the neovascular complex. And we will know about that in the management later. This is a, an image of clinical on the left side. As we see, there is a central scar. There is vessels coming from the FV, but we can't see any vessels in the scar due to uh, the opacity we can't uh, see so at. But if we saw to the image on the left side, this is fluorescein and geography, we can see very well the blood vessels. In this, the image on the left side show insulin green and geography, and on the right side, there is fluorescein and geography. And the, uh, on the right side, there is leaking of the blood vessel. This is very well uh, uh, seen, and it would be beneficial in treatment with antifagic, as we see uh, later. Uh, la, uh, other thing of non-invasive is optical coherence, tomography, and geography. It is very rapid. It is low uh, and short learning curve, and it gives a very um, good information about the depth of vessels, which will be very effective in case of high needed diathermy in the management of corneal neovascularization operatively. But it is limited by the field of view, very limited, and it can't detect vas vascular leakage. Patient counseling is very important in case of keratoplasty because the patient may have a high visual expectation. We have to discuss with the patient the surgery, possible complication, visual expectation, and most of the care. Patient must know that he will be with me for life, lifelong follow-up. Be operative management of corneal vascularization. Uh, we have more than one modality in management of corneal vascularization in the operative babies. First of them is the steroid survey. Steroid survey decreases the inflammation and new development of new corneal vascularization, and because it is inhibits the inflammatory cytokines and prostaglandins. Many surgeons advocate the use of topical steroids for two weeks operatively to decrease the risk of rejection. But no one knows, as we know, the complication of topical steroids, superinfection, glaucoma, or cataract formation. Second, laser photocoagulation. We have three modalities of laser photocoagulation, argon laser, yellow dye laser, and the frequency doubled YAG laser. If each of them has different modality of acting on blood vessels, and each of them has its drawbacks. Laser photocoagulation can coagulate efferent vessels because these vessels are wide and relatively slow blood flow. But efferent vessels are thinner, deeper, and they have a fast blood flow. That is the benefit of fluorescein and geography. We have to target efferent vessels, not efferent vessels. Uh, the drawbacks of argon laser, because it may use a more inflammation and so causing upregulation of visual. Uh, visual. Argon laser also may be complicated by iris atrophy, thinning, duvela ectasia, beautiful hemorrhage, or necrotizing sclerites in very severe cases. That is the benefit of yellow laser. Yellow laser is mainly absorbed by exohemoglobin and reduced hemoglobin, so we, more, we gain more effect with minimal energy. Red laser uh, is, is a, a, a new modality, but it still needs still need more research. Third modality is 
Uh, this simple procedure can be performed under tropical anesthesia. It can be performed in terms of the depth of blood vessel gained by optical coherence tomography and geography. It, is, it can be complicated by corneal microperforation, intercorneal hemorrhage, transient opacification, and destroyer due to adjacent collagen shrinkage. And finally, the semi, we have to target affluent vessels, and this is also a benefit of fluorescein and geography. Antivegif, bevacizumab, ranibizumab can be used as topical or subconjunctival or intrastromal injection. They have proved to be very effective in case of corneal neovascularization. We operatively usually we use subconjunctival injection, 1.25 to 2.5 of bevacizumab injected in more in the quadrant of the new vessel. Maximum effect is after two weeks, and this is very good for, as a operative, but the effect continues for six months. Intrastoma injection have been tried by many surgeons as the dose of 0.25 milligram of b Lastly, we will talk about prognosis. We have categorized a case of uh, keratoplasty into four categories. Category one is excellent prognosis. This is with central lesion, normal periphery, normal sensation, and eyelid and normal teeth film. Keratoconus, lattice and granular dystrophy, and the case of corneal scuff. Category two, go prognosis, 80 to 90 percent success rate, corneal biphy involved with minimal vascularization. This can be seen in a small vascularized scalp, pseudopicic or apicic bolus keratopathy, uh, aridu corneal endocell syndrome, macular dystrophy, interstitial keratitis. Category three, fair prognosis, 10 cornea, therefore lesion with mild dry eye, can be seen in chemical injury, velocity margin degeneration, shed or keratoglobus. Category 4 is a very poor prognosis, less than 50%. In case of limbal stem cell deficiency, ocular secretion benfibroid, Steven Jensen syndrome, severe chemical burn, and multiple graft failure. And I think this category goes to keratoprocesis, not penetrating keratoplasty. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hatem Sami, for this. Uh, 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 well organized and well. Very nice valid. talk, uh, Dr. Hatem. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, 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 the preoperative preparation is uh, the, 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 the main key for the success of the operation. So if we follow your instruction and your lines, I think we'll, the success rate will be higher. And uh, I will uh, ask you to postpone the, the question and the, the comments uh, till the end to not to waste, the, not to lose the time. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so I will uh, ask Dr. Mahmoud Ismail to start his presentation about the refractive keratoplasty. And before before sharing your screen, sir, I will uh, uh, I will say something for the audience about the chat. It's it's um, it's cancelled for security reason. So if there is any comments, the the if if anybody has any question, he can raise the hand or to send the question directly to the other academy the facebook page where there is a live session now of this uh, meeting on it the other i academy there uh, you can send the question and we will address all of questions at the end thank you very much please dr Ahmoud, share your screen now i think yeah okay Yes. I'm سامعين؟ طيب اوكي انا هبتدي. Thank you very much يا دكتور حسام. Unfortunately I don't hear you. I don't know why. Uh, you cannot trust technology. First of all I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Gustavo. Bienvenido al Cairo. We start by uh, our talk tonight about refractive corneal transplant. The aim of this presentation is to to guide you because, uh, about very important 
uh, item. There are no more nice patients. You can do a very nice keratoplasty and then comes a guy like this and he asks you why I'm still wearing glasses. Why cannot I see like this kind of advertisement that you have in your clinic? Time has changed from glasses after affected patients and now we are dealing with the highly sophisticated people. They want 2020 or more. They want high definition images and they want everything and free of glasses also. As you all know, there is the suture techniques haven't changed for a long of time. The we, mainly we have three types of uh, surgery, interrupted, continuous, mixed, and double running. But to have a guard against a guard against high astigmatic power in the post-operative, when you are dealing with keratoconus, beware of the six o'clock suture. You have to take it very tight. Why do we have to take it very tight, this suture? First of all, as you all know, keratoconus usually the bulge of the cornea is usually inferior. Also, this is the part of the cornea in the post-operative mainly exposed. And definitely this is the weakest part of it. So you have to take it the most tight as possible in order to be guarded against post-operative high astigmatism. Second, you have to mark your calendar about the three months post-op. This is the most important date for the patient to manipulate a stigma. If you make a manipulation of the wound before the three months, you have an irregular cornea. This is not stable yet. And if you wait too much, you probably won't be able to change anything in the astigmatic portion of the patient. So suture manipulation should be done around the three months period. Also astigmatic keratotomy. Astigmatic keratotomy, you can do it manually or by the femtosecond to second laser. The best results to have to achieve post PKP astigmatic keratotomy is to the cases of mixed astigmatism, where you have a component of hyperopia and the rest in the opposite meridian of high astigmatic error. Of course, when you do it by the femtosecond laser, you, have, you can indulge yourself by making the anterior segment OCT live, and you know exactly up, up to when you can go deep. It's easy, reproducible, very nicely centered. And most of all, you have the, the biggest gapping that you want. You cannot have a gapping of the incision like this if you do it manually. In the post-operative, if we find that the astigmatic effect is fading away, you can even in the slit lamp reopen it very easily. This is how the circumferential healing ring affects the post-operative astigmatism. If you just make two, key, two astigmatic cuts, definitely the result will be satisfactory. In cases though you have a high astigmatism post keratoplasty and you're do, going to do cataract surgery, as you can see post posterior subcapsular cataract in the image of this video, you have to open on the wound in order to release the high astigmatic push. Try to make an incision and a counter incision. This will lead to easing of the astigmatic astigmatism acquired because of the healing of the keratoplasty. By the way, this patient was done by the femtosecond second laser and still we did we did have a huge amount of astigmatism in the post op
This is another case. In spite of having a very clear cornea, the patient outcome was 20 diopter of astigmatism, a record of astigmatism. So you need to do two things for this patient. You have to release and you have to make stress sutures. This how is the Purkinje image with the cretoscope on table. You can see that there is a huge pear shape and this pear shape announces a huge astigmatic portion of the cornea. You identify the steep meridian and you release it. You make on the wound astigmatic and also on the counter and then stress sutures. The stress sutures itself is not correcting anything, but it helps the gapping of the counter effect of the two astigmatic uh, incisions that you don't. If you don't do stress sutures, then there is no efficient gapping and the astigmatic portion is not well correct. Some cases we have surprises like this case. This is a patient who underwent successful penetrating keratoplasty and he was left over by two or three diopters of myopia and three or four diopters of astigmatism. The patient was insisting on refractive surgery. His doctor, his surgeon, performed LASIK on this, on top of keratoplasty. When you do LASIK on top of keratoplasty, in cases of previous keratoconus, definitely you have ectasia because the weak cornea that you have transplanted to it in your graft, the residual button, the residual area in the periphery is still ectatic. So when you cut in it, it will get lasik ectasia easily. And this patient had this sinus, his sinus location is very thin, it's 276. As you can see, it's a complete picture of ectasia. In a case like this, you have to think something out of the box, something new. You cannot do astigmatic keratotomy to a patient like this, but you can deal with him as if he is a keratoconus patient. Why? Because he has no option otherwise this to implant two rings and treat him as if he is a virgin cornea, as if he's is a virgin cornea with keratoconus. You have thin cornea, regular astigmatism, and moreover, a furious patient. This patient was a dentist, he was a doctor, a dentist, and he was very furious with his doctor, with his surgeon, and he came to me and I treated him with femtosecond uh, assisted intracornea rings. In spite of the uncertainty of uh, the, 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 the technique we are using, the patient was desperate because the other option was to make a new transplant again. And this was for him devastating. After applying the femtosecond laser, you have to check the tunnel But you have the, the, the privilege of having a very adequate centration. And this is how we uh, implant in, in, in cases like this. This was the first case that I have done post PKP ectasia. And it was very rare. Sorry, as we say in Arabic. This is the post-operative, the patient, as you can see, the image looks very sweet and nice. Before concluding my presentation, two remarks I would like to say to you. Our great professor Hamid from Benha University, Abdelman and Hamid, have raised an issue of the subconjunctival hemorrhage that is 
uh, that we are seeing too much in the, this uh, uh, time of year. I myself was wondering why we do see a lot of subconjunctival hemorrhages. And I would like to advise you to take care with treating suspicion because it might be one of the signs of the COVID-19. Uh, Finally, I had a beautiful experience operating in 3D in the last uh, six months. It's a very new experience. You have to take care when you are suturing at the beginning because you are, uh, you are not using the microscope, you are wearing a glasses, a 3D glasses, and you can see the image of the, uh, of the surgery uh, in a 3D dimension when you are operating. It's slightly difficult at the beginning because you are not looking through binoculars, you are using the glasses and you are operating by air. You have to look for where you are uh, fixating because you have a very sharp image in one point. And this is a case of Dalk that I operated using the 3D microscope. I would like to thank you again. And again, I would like to welcome Dr. Gustavo to our meeting. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud, uh, for this kind and this guiding and a very, very uh, simple and official uh, presentation. And as usual, you are giving us the, ex the uh, extracts of your long experience in this field and tips and uh, clinical and surgical tips and uh, tricks in the cornea surgery. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, and um, le le let me uh, also skip the questions and the comments about the presentation uh, to, to have the uh, presentation of Dr. Assad about the femsecond versus conventional uh, pretreating keratoplasty. Please, Dr. Assad, share your screen now. Okay, Dr. Assad. You see the presentation? Yes. Okay. Uh, Femp second uh, laser assisted keratoplasty. Uh, we, uh, we will speak in uh, Femp second laser assisted keratoplasty and compare it with conventional. Uh, with, you know, as a first organ transplantation with by Edward Zerm, first visually successful human penetrating coronary transplant by Slovakia by Edward Zerm. Uh, conventional penetrating keratoplasty remains the most commonly performed cornea transplantation procedures, largely because lamellar surgery is difficult, time consuming, and because the interface irregularity can limit the visual outcome. But there is many disadvantages of conventional technique as a regular terephonation of the donor or the recipient cornea, iris during terephonation, uh, excessive bleeding from the iris and wound edge, uh, poor graft centration. Uh, in this uh, video, this will show conventional penetrating keratoplasty. As we uh, use Zhachan manual terophile, the Hesburgh Baron terophile, and remove the cornea by the corneal scissor. During removal of the cornea by the corneal scissor, there is the cut may be irregular and not precise cut, as there is posterior ledge, as we show, as shown in this video. Uh, the posterology can be removed by the corneal scissor. This leading to an irregular cut, uh, poor wound coaptations, and may lead to a high degree of astigmatism. This is a major disadvantage of penetrating keratoplasty. So we will talk about the femto and compare it with the conventional technique. Femto laser, this is the femto laser system. Uh, the film to laser uh, is first described by Dr. Grof, Dr. Ahmed Zouel. She is an Egyptian Arabic uh, chemist, which is known as the father of the film to chemistry. He was awarded in 1999 the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his work in film to chemistry. And he becomes the first Egyptian to win the Nobel Prize in the scientific field. 
Uh, the first human full sickness corneal transplantation using femtosecond laser was performed in 2005. What is the femto laser? The femto laser is an infrared laser that delivers very short pulses of energy in order to make a cut at a specific depth, creating the desired corneal shape. We can make specific depths by the femto laser. And with confocal microscopy, suggests that laser incision lead to keratocyte activation, which lead to large surface area of healing and improve bone stability. Uh, by femtosecond laser, the surgeon can uh, have the ability to have a precise incision of the cornea. With intralase laser, we can create a tongue and group pattern to ensure a good fitting and coaptation between the donor and the recipient without any slippage. Uh, this ensures good wound opposition and reducing the astigmatism. How the femtosecond laser, well, femtosecond laser energy is absorbed by the tissue and the releasing of plasma, leading to plasma formation. This plasma formation leading to the formation of uh, creation of cavitation bubbles. Uh, this bubbles leading to separation of the tissue, which converting the laser energy to mechanical energy in a process which is called the photo disruption. As uh, this, is, uh, this figure showing the photo disruption on separation of the tissue by the femtosecond laser. What's the advantage of femtosecond laser assisted keratoplasty? Uh, when making the incision with mechanical terophyne, the cut is quite curved, which may be lead to complicated, slow healing and scarring of the wound. But by femtosecond laser, uh, we the separated of the corneal layers by from perform a, a cut with a sharp edge. Uh, the cut of the cornea by laser is performed by ultra high speeds duration of pulse, which can be measured in fraction of seconds without heating of the tissue. This is leading to minimization of tissue trauma and reducing the pain after surgery. Uh, the impact of laser, there is no connection or no contact between the patient and the laser system. So decrease the risk of infectious complication, which may be present in the conventional technique. Laser is completely computerized, which eliminates the random errors, no errors, uh, which is leading to accurately calculation the volume and depth in a precise uh, pattern. Uh, the femto technique ensures almost exact coaptation of the recipient bed and the donor graft, which greatly reduces the risk of post-operative astigmatism. In brief, the cut are precise in depth, uh, limited damage to surrounding structures and tissue. Wound configuration create more surface area of healing, improve tissue alignment, which leading to less suture tension, superior biomechanical strength, rapid visual recovery, and less astigmatism, excellent wound coaptation, faster suture removal, and faster recovery of the best corrected visual acuity. All these are the advantage of frame to second laser assisted cardioplasty. Uh, there is contraindication of frame to second laser. Yes, there is a contraindication. Any, any condition which prevent proper docking as severe ocular surface irregularity, elevated glaucoma filtering blip, glaucoma shunt implant, small orbits, extremely narrow palpebral fissures, recent corneal perforation, all this prevent the proper docking. Uh, what is the type of femtosecond laser cuts? There is five types of femtosecond laser cuts. There is standard cut. There is standard cut, as we see in figure number A. Standard cut, which create a, a butt joint. Uh, there is top hat, which is number B. Uh, there is mushroom shape, which is C figure. Uh, there is zigzag pattern in D shape. There is Christmas tree pattern in E figure. The first is the top hat. First, uh, film second laser customized terrifination. Uh, uh, the cut boosts the advantage of improved wound sealing. This is good coaptation of the wound and gives sevenfold less leakage than any other type of pattern. And this top hat can be used if we need more endothelium, as in cases of Fox endothelial dystrophy. In the Fox endothelial dystrophy, when we need any endothelial disease, we can use the top hat pattern as it gives more endothelium. In mushroom pattern, provide greater anterior stroma replacement. If we need more stroma, we need the mushroom pattern, as in disease involving the anterior stroma as keratoconus. Uh, less and give less, less topographic astigmatism and less time to complete suture removal. Zigzag pattern is angled side cut, which create a precise donor host transition with less tissue misalignment. Uh, it is easy to be learned. 
curve, it is easy to suture, the zigzag, which is the simplest one, and it may be used in previous field penetrating keratoplasty, open globe, trauma, or corneal laceration. In this uh, video, we show the same two second assessment keratoplasty. First of all, we mount the corneal scleral bottom, we prepare the donor cornea on uh, application or mounting of the corneal scleral bottom in the artificial anterior chamber. After mounting in the artificial anterior chamber, we inject lancet salt solution BSS to make the tension is stony hard. After that, we we make docking by the film to laser system. Uh, during the docking, we, we do mushroom shaped cut to create the donor tissue as this patient is keratoconic. So we use mushroom batter. Uh, we use mushroom batter in for the uh, for the corneal bottom. As we show this video, there's cavitation and the bubble formation. Uh, after preparing of the donor, we prepare the recipient cornea. Uh, the recipient patient has keratoconus. We do uh, also docking for the patient during the docking. The intraocular pressure may be elevated to 40 millimeter mercury. Uh, under topical anesthesia, we can do uh, a mushroom, also mushroom incision, which is 0.2 millimeter uh, less than the uh, donor corneal bottom. Uh, we show that the incision done by mushroom by film to second uh, laser after uh, docking. We not completely cut the cornea. The incision is not full uh, thickness. We leave only uh, the endothelium and part of the uh, dismiss and stroma uh, to uh, as the patient is transferred from the uh, from the film to second laser room to the operating room. So we don't do full sickness, uh, full sickness uh, uh, incision. After that marking is the sutures and uh, we do uh, suturing as usual. We open the anterior chamber from the side of the, of the uh, recipient, injection of basic elastic materials. As we uh, sh show, we remove the cornea is uh, so easy after the complete cut by the film to second laser. We uh, show the, the wound is very regular and very precise. There's no irregularity, no posterior ledge, no remnant. Uh, the section of the uh, donor cornea, also after doing by film to laser, it is easy. After that, uh, the usual suturing as conventional techniques was done. Uh, suturing is traditional, maybe with 12 interrupted sutures, by 10 0 nylon suture, or continuous or interrupted suture as usual. The primary fixation of the graft is usually done by four interrupted cardinal sutures uh, placed 90 degree apart in 90 degree adipse, not full thickness dips to avoid creation of crack for the infections. The position of second suture, as Prof. Dr. Mahmoud Ismail said, is very, very important at six o'clock because it determines the symmetric geometry that is helpful in eliminating the astigmatism. Uh, follow up of the patient every, uh, every week for the first month and every month uh, until the complete suture removal. In uh, the time we do uncorrected visual acuity, best corrected visual acuity, slit lamp examination, made of anterior segment OCT, topographic uh, topography pentacam to, uh, to determine the degree of astigmatism. Uh, when to start to suture removal, we start suture removal at six months, maybe at, uh, as Prof. Dr. Mahmoud Sman said, as three months. Uh, at uh, 12 months, we can complete suture uh, removal. Suture removal only first in the first three months was if it is broken or loose or vascularized or infected, this only sutures can be removed. Uh, when corneal wound was appear to be healed, we can complete suture removal. Home message, uh, film to second penetrating keratoblasty provides smooth regular interface uh, with faster visual rehabilitation, better long-term visual equity, Earlier suture removal by mechanically st uh, stronger corneal wound. Safety and durability of the procedure less endothelial cell loss. Make the film to second laser keratoblasty is our procedure of choice in patients with advanced corneal disease. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Assad, for this very nice presentation and uh, a very rich one about the new technique of the film to second laser assisted keratoplasty. Sure. Okay, can you hear me now? Hello? Dr. Hatim, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you, I miss you. Okay. 
Okay, ch okay. Ch check, ch check your mic. Doctor, I don't hear you. Doctor, Doctor Asad, check your microphone. Ch sorry, check your speaker. You can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Asad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We, we will we will use the <laughs> the uh, this this way. Uh, uh, we and we will back uh, at the end to discuss some points about the the. Uh, the uh, advantages of the femtosecond assisted carotoplasty. Then uh, we will change the plan uh, and I will postpone, I will shift my presentation to be the, the final one. And I, I will call now my dear friend, Dr. Mm -hmm. Gustavo Victor to give, give us his presentation about the carotoprothesis in cases when the carotoplasty, the, 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 the donor grafts um, is is not possible to be uh, um, yeah, so. Adelante, Don Gustavo. Okay. So, okay. so very thank you. Okay. okay. Very thank you. Okay, Gustavo. Yes. Can, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hear you, but I I I will ask you please to to be just a minute before you go for your presentation and before yeah. and because you are from Brazil I, I had a message today from uh, our dear uh, colleague the Brazilian colleague and the the the, 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 the big name in the Caraconas uh, Ambrosio Renato Ambrosio he sent us uh, today a message for the all Egyptian of Thalmogest to share in the campaign which is the violet June. Can you, can you see my screen now? I think Gustavo, you are sharing, sharing us in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. The violet, yes, yes, the yes. violet John campaign, which is founded by Renato yes, Ambrosio, yes, yes, an international yes. campaign to, for the awareness uh, about the Kratokonis and uh, it, it's the slogan, uh, don't rub your eye. So let me before yes, I start yes. to show the video of Brazil, uh, the video, sorry, of Ambrosio. It's a message for all of us. Excuse me. Hello, this is Renato Ambrosio from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And I'm very happy to send this message to my colleagues and friends from Egypt. I have highly respect from ophthalmology in Egypt and I have many friends and collaborators in great research they have done over the last years. I welcome all of you to the Violet June, which is a keratoconus awareness campaign. The campaign is global with the mission to tell patients about the disease so they can live better. We have the main message so that we tell people not to rub the eye because eye rubbing aggravates keratoconus and may even cause it crazy. So welcome all of you to join this campaign and we forward to make the life of patients with keratoconus better. I know that it's very common in Egypt as it is in Brazil. We have many patients to help. I hope all is well and thank you very much for joining the Bible Channel. Thank you, Ambrosio, and th thank you for all. And we have to contact this message for all. Don't drop your to, to learn our patients and so sorry to teach our all our patients and their the child's parents. Don't drop your eye to avoid the progression of the diseased cornea or to to get a mechanical ectasia, which is some sort of uh, keratoconus. Uh, excuse me, uh, Gustavo, and then you can share your screen, please. Yes. Okay. Sorry for interruption. So uh, I'd like to say hello and thank you and for an all uh, warm welcome from all my friends from Egypt. So Dr. Hassan, that is, is, is we are waiting you there to this year, but before the pandemic, yeah. our meeting. And very good to to invite me and to know and uh, your friends and your colleagues, Dr. Professor Moham Ismaili, Dr. Assad, and Dr. Uh, Hatem. Hatem. Yeah. So I say thank you, and it's my pleasure to stay here.
my so pleasure, it's, uh, our uh, pleasure. Uh, Hassan uh, is uh, asking me to talk about something about uh, K Pro. So I share with you the some 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 example, some resume about this. Uh, it, I'd like to, to say thank you to my friend from Massa Year, Roberto Pineda, is very friend of us, to, to share this, some slides for us, and, and Dr. Klaus Dolman is the main, may introduce this in the, in the world. So here is the, some, some pictures from K-Pro, so I so want to introduce them, so it's very different, so it's the courtesy of Dr. Victor Perez, Dr. Victor Perez was in Boston Palma and then go went to Duke University now. And so for the, the to start and so this, the K Pro one, so it's is this this first example there is a uh, this locking hand uh, that you put uh, below here. And then so it's the first uh, two thousand three uh, uh, sample. So this is how you can put the graph here inside. Uh, for the sandwich between this K Pro and the lock hand behind, behind here. So you can see here the, the steps. So in the graph, after you cut the graph, you make a very small hole in the center with this, this uh, instrument. And then you put the, the, the graph inside here through the hole. And then you oh. you put the other part, the plate here. That he, there is a very 16 holes in this plate to make it uh, echoes more can can make it survive in this graph. And then you lock with the this ring with this instrument before uh, in the uh, below. So this is the the end of this mountain of the the cable. So. So this is improved. So this lock is uh, go through titanium uh, uh, material, and then it's, it's a, one example which the, is in the patient. There you can see the, the bandage contact lens here inside uh, uh, above them. So it's, this is the 2007 design. So uh, this the 16 hole back plate. So the new titanium back plate. So this is, is very important to, to improve the the actual more can can go through this plate, go to the to the graft and make the, the graft survive. This you you will see you will see after the other slide it can go uh, very uh, down the incidence of the melting of the corner. So this is the example of the, 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 the improve of the plates, the back plates, the biocompatibility and the titanium, the titanium uh, sample. So this is the 2003 uh, design piece. So it's, uh, it's the other slide, and then, then you can see, so the, the key pro two, so the key pro two, so is, if you not allow to do the Kipro one uh, surgery, then you should go to Kipro two. So this is usually the most uh, case that you you should use this. It is a simblepharo and very loss of conjunctival forces. Forces. So then you you cannot you cannot do the Kipro one, and then you should you should go to Kipro two like this sample here be, uh, below. And then this is the Kipro 2 design. So it's a little higher here. And then this is a, uh, some kinds of uh, indication, others indication. You can see this, this 2000 uh, paper in the all apps catalytic. The, the results is very good. So all, all the very large uh, uh, patient of the sample have a very good improved of division and a very good follow-up. So the other example is in the anidigia patient, 15 case. Uh, also you have uh, improved uh, and the, this patient and then the follow-up is a very, very good also. So is the example of the patient uh, with anidigia and they have 18 four-month follow-up, seven years and then 
the pose up operator power improved uh, from counting finger to 2060. So you say other patient uh, with the airpack uh, uh, desires after after key, uh, transplant, uh, coronary transplant, and then uh, so you should do uh, the the K pro uh, one, and then is uh, you can see that this inflammatory patient is is one of the one of the worst case. Uh, you you can see the why. So, uh, what? Uh, why God will improve these these results in these patients? So, first, fresh coronary as carrier character process uh, is usually can improve the results of these surgery with the key pro. So, posterior plate apicus uh, uh, completely behind the graft is a very important. Issue that you you can avoid some problems and backplate holes so to facilitate the nutrition and hydration hydration of the graft is other other topic and and chronic uh, 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 scleral corneal lens so to diffuse evaporative forces and corneal surface is the uh, can 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 help us to improve this the surgery in this patient. So also prophylactic topical antibiotics for life, and we we'll see this in, in the, some some other slides. And new glaucoma shunts also improve uh, the improve the results on this patient. So it's can can other others uh, improves in other areas to help the K pro. So you can see here. Uh, the results in 252 key pros implants. And you can see here in the blue, blue is the most patient have graft failure, usually more than one uh, graft uh, in the same patient. So 11% is clinical injury and 17% is autoimmune uh, desire. So take the, 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 the loss of the the surgery, loss of the results. You can see here with the health of this patient that is not good with the results. It's, a, it's coming from autoimmune disease. So, and the other part, the gas failure, and it's a small part, 56%, and the, the minimum is the clinical injury. Using this, this patient, uh, stay here in this, in this graph, usually is. Uh, is, is after more than one uh, corneal transplant, penetrantic corneal transplant. So usually the patient has one, two, or three, usually four corneal transplants to go to the K-Pro, and then you can, you, 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 have, you have these results improved here. But you can see that uh, all patients that have much uh, inflammation, uh, it was two kinds of the patient have the worst results in these patients. In this surgery, so here you can see the the curve of the survivor uh, in this kind of the diagnostical. You can see here the autoimmune patient is the blue one, it's the worst scenario. So you can see here in the month follow up in the month, 50 months, and the probably in the results in the in the this kind of patient. And behind them is the clinical patients and other patients. You can see usually here is the most is the value cornea transplant. So uh, in the results, uh, the study made 14 uh, other factors. Uh, it's a multivariable analysis. And then you can see that we divide uh, patient in age. So age is a very important, uh, very important item to predict the, the results. In K Pro, you can see here we can divide we can divide age before uh, less than 60, 65 years, years old and after 60, 60 years old. So you can see the the lowest the the, the the worst scenarios the worst results. You can see that the chemical injury, but chemical injury in young people is very very it's more it's four times four times uh, worse than people. Uh, older. 
Also, you can see how in the immune disease people that if the if the patient have less than five, 65 years old, so the more younger patient, you can see the you can see the worst scenario in the surgery uh, in contrast to the patient after 65 years old. So the conclusion is that 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 paper is the autoimmune disease have a lower retention rate, very statistically significant. Overall, the, the K-PRO has a good retention rate, 91%, and no immune and no chemical bird patients have a excellent retention. So the, 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 the home message is uh, if you have a low inflammation and older patients, uh, lower uh, uh, vasculation of the, of the uh, host corner, is you can improve the the results. So the opposite is uh, true. So all the things that we 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 should do for life in this patient. So extended bandage contact lens in the most guys. So chronic top with steroids. So you can manage uh, more more customizing this patient. But the chronic antibiotics usually should do like this. So when coming in this concentration, in this concentration, uh, you use the eye drops in this patient, also polytimicin, and also fluoroquinolone uh, drops, and also especially uh, uh, povidine EOG in five five percent drops in this patient daily, mm -hmm. uh, and and if you use this uh, this uh, guide you can go very low, low incidence of endophthalmic, especially in non-immune disease. So very high uh, immediate occur at long-term attrition. So in the complications, so you have this, this, this most common complication. So contact lens deposits, corneal melts. So this improve, especially by the, that the, the large holes in the back plate of the K Pro of the mountain. So, infection improved, that they uh, also uh, improve infection, uh, like we show in the last slide. So, retrospective membrane is a problem, and we are talking about this. And uh, stereo fixed and so, and in CME A, it's a problem. You should manage this, but the big problem also is glaucoma. So here, example of the deposit of the of the contact in the contact lens. So usually, when you change the contact lens for hybrid contact lens, you can avoid the most of the case of the deposit in the contact lens. So the other thing is the corneal meltings. So you can see the the eliminate by the addition of the holes in the back plate of the K Pro for improved diffusion of acute more in the, the donor cord. So lifelong bandage contact lens to diffuse evaporate enforcing of over Cape Cod. So all of this, uh, we can prove the, the corneal meltings, avoiding corneal meltings results. So this is the kind of study that is studying to improve the, the manage of this patient. So immunomodulations among higher groups. So you can uh, also immunomodulation with System uh, drugs on this, this kind of the patient that have the worst results in this kind of surgery. So also in the you can uh, make a, a cross link in the in the donor cornea. Also uh, is studying about this, and also other studying is to make a, con a bandage contact lens to uh, allow and uh, slow uh, slow. Uh, modulation antibiotic. So the contact lens have the antibiotics and can can uh, uh, can can live slowly uh, in the in the in this kind of the patient. So like this. So bacterial infection definitely has use with the, some use of antibiotics. We usually use fluoroquinolone, and, uh, which van comes in, but he, he, of course, he cares patients uh, compliant. Uh, 
so this kind of this page have a fungal uh, infection of fallen caper only to to show here and how it can appear in this the clinical scenario it's not good so this uh, other uh, uh, research about to improve the the infections uh, to avoid infection so uh, as i told you the contact lens antibody pregnant to to liberate to slow liberate the the, the antibiotic antibacterial coating uh, on the capro and the and then usually the protein for five percent is is very, very, really very important so retrospective membrane it's a, it's a problem and the incidence is higher. You can see below here is 25 to 60 percent, 65 percent. Then you can see so the patients have the down of the visual acuity, and it's, it's very, very more common inflammatory eyes and most antistudy folds, 70 percent hate as infection and anidigia patients. So these these are these are kind factors to improve this. Also in the inflammatory eyes, very inflammatory eyes. So titanium plates appear to reduce the incidence of of the uh, uh, membrane, uh, back membrane. So we can see in the next slide. So uh, very interesting to it to about the the, the 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 diameter of the shape, the diameter of the the transplant, and the incidence of the hetero uh, pupillar membrane. So you can see here, uh, and the, the focus is this this situation here in the between host and the and the guest uh, host in the donor corner. So you can see this. We are seeing the next slide, the UBM. So if you use the the K pro uh, too small uh, for the patient, you you make it more thicker this higher. How much thicker this higher? You, you can have more incidence of the retinal pupillo membrane like this. So you can see here in the, in the microscope uh, in vitro, you can see here the donor corner. You can see the host corner, that the area that I show in the last slide. And you can see here the fibrous membrane. But uh, you can see that it's open here, but it's very interesting these slides uh, show the in nine in nine point five uh, millimeters back back plate versus eight point five millimeters black plate. So you can see here that area that I show in that slide uh, is more thicker here between the host uh, and the donor corner. The host and the donor corner. This area between this is more thicker in the eight point five uh, than the nine point five usually. And then this this patient have more incidence of het, uh, popular membrana as we show here uh, in the 8.5 millimeters diameters of the back plate. You can see more uh, higher incidence of the retinopupillar membrane. So no patient in this study uh, with 9.5 millimeter group develop a retinopupillar membrane. So glaucoma is a very big problem in this patient. This is the very big problem because uh, we can't uh, manage, you can, we can't measure the, the, and approach and manage the, the, the IOP in this patient as we usually do in the normal patient in the normal situation corner because they care for of the surgery in the eye. So the incidence also is very higher. So it's 60 to 72 percent. And the higher PF the key pro, it's often uh, often worse. It's usually it's higher all, uh, only but only uh, only because the, the this kind of the surgery. So optimal management of the glaucoma it's you should do and pressure, uh, as I told you, is much difficult to still black the plate and the, the, the different tissue than the, the all parameters that you use to do, use to measure IOP in the normal patient is not the, it's not all, it's not the, uh, the same of this kind of the patient because it's a different situation, different tissue and, the, and you have a, a, a other kinds of tissue that is 
the, the, is, is uh, can do the measure not not confiable. So digital population and the sclera it uses the best technique to this one, and the 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 nerve the of the nerve the CG ratio in the nerve about OCG is also is a very good parameter. So you can do this, uh, of course, it's not uh, in the same uh, uh, menstru objective menstru in also in the ultrasound, but in the OCT is much better than you can see this. If you not have ultrasound, you can see the, the, the nerve of this patient and make the follow-up. But using this juice, the, the, these two parameters is, is the best way that we can do uh, to manage this, this, this patient, this IOP, this patient. Also, the tone of pain is not is right here on the slide, but the tone of pain in the, in the, in the host cornea, in limbo, something like that, you can uh, try to measure the IOP and you can put in the other, other part of the eye and see uh, how is the IOP versus in the normal patient in the same place, and then you can manage the IOP in this kind of patient. So you can see here that is the, the CG ratio, so the, the glaucoma, uh, the optical nerve worse is different, uh, go worse different uh, from the diagnostic. So you can see uh, before the surgery, and you can see the burns, burn diagnostic is going faster after 24 uh, months and, 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 and above than the other kind of the diagnostic. So the glaucoma usually go really forward in this kind of the surgery, but you can see that the different diagnostic have different uh, improve of the glaucoma patients. This comparates versus the the primary open angle glaucoma. So this, the burns patients have usually 7.5 faster uh, improve this glaucoma than the, the primary open angle glaucoma. So in conclusion, after BK, so glaucoma can progress happily. We should put this in our mind. It's a very big issue, a very big problem of the, all of them in this kind of the patient. Uh, patients need follow up every three months. You need to be concerned. The patient need to know and need uh, need to have access to the to the medical care and have the the conscience that they need the depends of him also the 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 survival of this kind of the surgery. Early glaucoma surgery does show uh, pro, does show slow progression. If glaucoma present before the capro surgery, simultaneous shunt implantation is recommended. So, Steve, thank you very much for the our invitation. I also it's a very pleasure to stay here. Uh, maybe I hope one time to know your beautiful country. It's one of the beautiful countries that I, I I still know yet. And I very thank you for you, Hassan, and the Professor Maham and Dr. Hassan and Dr. Hassan to stay here with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Gustavo, for this wonderful presentation. Which Thank is... you very much, Dr. Gustavo. Okay, but... Uh, let uh, me... Yeah, okay, so... Let me make a comment, uh, a small uh, comment about uh, cratoprothesis. If you allow me, I, I would like to show you something, uh, Dr. Uh, yeah, okay. You want to share your screen? Yes, please, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, so of course, the, the... The... The Boston cataprothesis is very well studied, but I would like to show you something very easy, Dr. Gustavo. A small kind of uh, work that I have done after a number of years of trying several kinds of uh, cataprothesis. And uh, let me be honest with you, I have faced all the problems that you have uh, bravely uh, presented today. And this is very honest from your side that you have presented every complication. And it's true. You have a high rate of glaucoma, retroprosthetic membrane, a spontaneous infection, spontaneous melting, extrusion. I have seen of them all. 
And uh, I have concluded that it's it's a very heroic surgery, and uh, and I have my own keratoprothesis, uh, which is uh, uh, slightly different than the Boston keratoprothesis. Actually, in the Boston keratoprothesis, you need a cornea, you need a graft, you need a cornea transplant, apart from the prosthesis itself, which is very expensive. So in a country like ours, uh, this is a very high load of, uh, of, of uh, expenses. We do have a keratoprothesis, which is easy, that it's, uh, I called it the lamellar keratoprothesis, and it only costs about $12. Yes, 12. $12. Not $12,000, 12, $12, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you just make a pocket in the cornea and you open in the posterior lamella of the cornea. And then after a few months, you, uh, two months, you make a, a, an optical uh, perforation on the surface. Uh, to cut it short, uh, this, this is the, the, the surgery with this uh, prosthesis. And I'm praying for the guy who is doing it for me is sick now and I'm praying for him that so he can recover, recover. he gets wow. back to work in order to, he does it himself but yeah, it's a kind of near. Inshallah, Rabbi Nishfi. Hello, Dr. Ahmad. Mm. Yes, this is a case that I uh, have to rebook. It's very, uh, with a very kind hearted and self esteem. He was looking forward to return his vision. Rahmud. So I did him this. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Unfortunately, there, there is a technical error at your side, Dr. Ahmoud. Uh, Dr. Ahmoud, uh, ca can you hear me? I don't think. No, I don't. Okay. Please, sir, can you hear me, Dr. Ahmoud? I'm sorry, I have to run it. Uh, let me let me rapidly because I okay, there's, uh, don't want to retain you more than this. Uh, after you do a uh, surgical pocket. Not yet. You see it, Yahaz? No. Not you yet. can see it in the screen? No, no. Up till now, there is no. You, you see the, the video, Hassan? No, 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 sir. There is no video. This slide, but empty. There is no working video. Uh, can you, uh, please, can you re share your screen? From the yeah. Quit, sir, and reshare it again. I think it is something is not. Yeah, okay. He's, he's trying now to reshare again. I hope to work this time. I don't know if you see the screen or not. No, not yet. I can see just the announcement that you are sharing your screen, but there is no video up to now. Yeah, okay. Now, now I can see it. Yes, sir. Dr. Ahmoud, you, 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 can, you can speak.
the, the internet today is not nice. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud, I, I think we ha I th think you have a problem in the internet connection. So we, we may t take a question from there. There, there are two of my uh, of our audience raising the hand. I will unmute Dr. Mustafa Zahran. He's raising his hand from a long time. Mm. Dr. Mustafa, if you have a question, you are welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ma hadatkum Mustafa Zahran, tabib mukim tabul azhar asyut. Ano san Dr. Mustafa. You are welcome in your home. Thank you, sir. At your first, uh, first, I want to uh, thank my dear professor for this uh, great and wonderful presentation. They share uh, their long uh, experience in this field of uh, keratoblasting. And uh, my special thank for my dear prof, Dr. Asad Nurdin, our pioneer in uh, corneal transplantation and the corneal surgeon. Thanks. I have uh, uh, my I have a simple question for uh, Dr. Asad. Yes, my sir. question is. In film to second uh, laser assisted keratoblasting, Dr. Asad, what do you do prefer or what do you do? A full thickness cut or, or not? Or, or other cut in uh, film to second laser assisted keratoblasting? Thank you, sir. Thanks, Dr. Mustafa. Thank you. In uh, film to second you. laser, uh, we don't do full thickness cut. As, uh, the film to second incision was done in the film to second laser room. And we transfer the patient from uh, the frame to second room to another operating room. So if uh, we do full second okay. cut, uh, the, the cornea, the, the wound may be opened and the, there is maybe collapse and may lose the anterior chamber and the complication can occur. Uh, so that we, okay. uh, we leave uh, residual uh, mm -hmm. in the and the dismet membrane about uh, on the part of the stroma about six, uh, 60 to 80 micron, mm -hmm. so not full second. Yeah. We yeah. only the stroma and, uh, all, 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 only offend them for this reason you, you don't you do do not uh, do uh, full sickness do, we can't do open uh, we can't do full sickness cut as there's maybe uh, collapse may occur and loss of the anterior chamber may occur and the complication uh -huh. of the content as the patient can't be operated in the same uh, setting we transfer the patient from room to another room طب لو البروسيجر يعني دو كومبليتلي ان وان روم وي كان دو هو لازم يتنقل من مكان من فروم روم تو ذا انذر روم ده 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 اليوجوال اللي بيحصل في في اي في اي سايت ذا يوجوال كات ذا يوجوال كات از نوت 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 فور سيكنس كات ثانكس ثانكس ثانك يو ثانك يو دكتور مصطفى فور ذيس جود تريكي كويستشن اند فور اند ثانك يو فور دكتور اسعد فور ذا ذا ويل انسر I think, you, I, I think everywhere the, there are two separate rooms, one for the film second, one for the, uh, oh. to complete the operation. I think everywhere. Uh, yeah. In Brazil too, uh, Dr. Gustavo, the, the, the room yes, for, the, yeah. for the film too, yeah, it's not, it's not the same uh, room of the, of the uh, uh, OR, operative theater for the corneal uh, surgery, right? So yes, uh, we have here in the in the clinic four four rooms, and we have uh, different uh, different phantom lasers. So we have a uh, uh, we have the Alcon one, the bigger one, and we have the the Zimmer Walsh one. So the, we have three cataract surgery rooms, and we have the other uh, refract surgery room. So the 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 phantom second laser. The, 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 the large one is it's outside in the between the three homes in the center uh, uh, more more uh, behind and then the yes. the patients come and go there and but we have the the fence on the the Zimmer one and then the Z8 then we can we can change them between the rooms so usually we do like this yeah okay thank you thank you Dr. Gustav. Dr. Mahmoud, do you, do you want to complete your video, please, before uh, completing the questions? 
I don't know. I'm sorry for the delay and what happened, but no, I we are excusing you about the, the internet, which is I think I, I, I know the stealer of the your internet now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You have seen it uh, until this part when you do a, a, a um, share your screen, please. Yes, I would share my screen. Uh, and I, I like for Dr. Ibrahim Fathi and Dr. Abdurrahman to raise the hands again. I will pick them up after a video of our professor. I don't know if you see it from here or no. Yeah, yeah, the first slide. K Pro, Ismail K Pro. You can see the video working yeah. now or not? Working? Yeah, 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 started now. Okay, you make this is a patient that we, uh, that underwent all the kind of surgery in the ocular surgery book, starting from retinal attachment to cataract to grafts, cornea grafts, a uh, couple of grafts, melting, everything. He went everything and he was very brave and kind and hearted that he have sustained always the, the wish that he regains his vision and his only eye. And uh, this what the surgery starts by doing uh, a lamellar pocket in the cornea. This pocket should be uh, as wide as possible and uh, up till the limbus. And uh, through this pocket, uh, as you can see, this is not the limbus, the limbus up to there. And yeah, this is not the limbus, the limbus is very, very far away. And you have to make the pocket as, as wide as possible. And then you proceed and uh, you cannot do any cautery because if you do cautery, this will, uh, will definitely melt the cornea. You have to be very sweet. This is the keratoprothesis, as you can see, it has a knob inside. It's just one point. You implant it inside the pocket. And before implanting inside the pocket, you will do a posterior lamellar hole. As you can see, you raise the pocket and you, you make a hole in the posterior lamellar. And if you do this, this will reduce the, one of the major complication of the keratoprothesis, which is the retroprothetic membrane, as Dr. Gustafa have said. Retroprothetic membrane, let me tell you something, it doesn't have any solution. Whenever it happens, you cannot defeat it. And this is the posterior lamellar hole that you are doing. You make a round perforation in the center, and then you implant the patient uh, in the pocket, and you don't. You have to be careful not to be making any tight suturing, otherwise extrusion will happen. You have to make it very uh, 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 suturing at ease, not tight sutures. So the cooptation is complete. By doing this, we are concluding the first part of the surgery. This is the first part. And then you wait two months and make superficial perforation in the center of the cornea to have an optical pathway for the patient. We don't have patients that see 66 or 69 or 612 or 660. We have patients who has Navigational vision, they don't depend on anybody, they just depend on themselves. Uh, just one patient, I am very proud of him. He is, uh, he is walking and going to work alone. Unfortunately, this patient uh, survived only for five years and don't have more than five years survival rate. I don't have seven or eight years, as as Dr. Gustavo has said, with the, with the with the, um, yeah, with, with, the Kipro, with the Boston, Boston, with the Boston, yes. Uh, with the Boston, I don't have this. This is this is one of the best patients actually. This 
has survived more than five years, but unfortunately the patient died later and we don't know. Uh, of course, as I said before, we don't uh, have, uh, uh, this is a funny part of the picture, famous picture here in Egypt, uh, Gustavo. And yeah. uh, this patient is blind and he claims that he can see this. This is typical, the the, uh, the, the post prosthesis patient of ours. <laughs> He just, uh, his name is the Sheikh Hosni, and this is a very old movie and very famous movie that he claims that he can see. And he actually, he, he yeah. insists in, in driving the bike in spite that he cannot see. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. How dangerous is the, the keratoprothesis? Uh, so dangerous that I will tell you just one, one, uh, one information about myself. In, in 1998, I performed 24 eyes of, uh, in one year, and this is a record. Actually, I, uh, as Gustavo have said, the cases are very few. But at that time, you are young and brave and ignorant. You, ignorance gives you braveness. You are brave because you don't know the complications. At that year, I did 24 eyes, but last year, I just did two, Gustavo, two cases that because you are now you have knowledge and you know how that it's difficult thank you and i'm sorry for the delay thank you very much and no sir i reckon it's it's very uh, precious uh, note uh, <laughs> and and a precious option we are hoping all of us hoping for the the manufacturer uh, the the the, uh, the i'm praying for him actually to, I'm to, praying for to him be recovered to, to be recovered yes. soon uh, we have dr brahim fathi is raising his hand and uh, and I'm thanking him for his patience. So, Dr. Ibrahim, give us your question. Thank you, sir. My name is Ibrahim Fathi. I'm assistant lecturer of ophthalmology at the University of Seoul. Hello. Uh, thank you for the <laughs> eminent uh, presentation. Fan, fans of Dr. Assad, yes, I know. <laughs> okay. Of course, uh, our professor. Yeah, okay. I'd ask him about, uh, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Yes, yes, yeah, you. thank you, sir. Uh, our professor, Dr. Asad, uh, thank you for this eminent presentation. Uh, I'd like to ask you about the shoe sign between the graft rejection and the graft failure. And when we have to tell the patient that we have to do exchange for this graft rather than uh, following up with medications. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Dr. Brain. Uh, Dr. Hassan, I think you will uh, speak about communications. Yeah, okay, I will. But if you want to, to, to give a brief answer about it, you can now. Okay. okay. Well, Haya, th this question is very important. The soil that has other for Dr. Inshallah, Brain. Okay. So you had. I think we have to wait to, for Hussam until Yani. Uh, we, we should comment, this is a very important note. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think, Gustavo? I think this is a very important, how to differentiate between rejected graft and graft failure. Actually, what Ibrahim wants to say is there is two types of graft failure, primary graft failure and failing graft after a few years of functioning cornea. And this is very important I think Hussam should should yeah, highlight it. I have I have a slide. I have uh, sorry. I have a slide about uh, uh, just one slide completely covering this part, and I will take the the answers from all my professors here. So I will take the the question uh, of Doctor Abdurrahman Abu Saadet. Okay, Doctor Abdurrahman, please give us your question. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, okay, uh, lectures of uh, hospital. Okay. I can't rename. I can't rename. Uh, okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Fine. Uh, how I, I have two questions. The first question is the uh, presentation by Dr. Hatim. Uh, how highlight the corneal vascularization? How to avoid complication from uh, uh, to avoid rejection uh, if the cornea is vascularized, uh, which is okay. I, uh, I'm not a refractive uh, ophthalmologist, so I ask him. And until I 
كانتيريور سيجمنت مش هتكلم كانتيريور سيجمنت او فيجنز اقول له لا الكونيا بتاعتك مش هبعت لك العيان ريفراكتيف يعني في في الكومن كلينيك هيسالني هيقول لي طب انا عايز انا عايز كريتوبلاستي امتى يعني احنا عارفين ان في حاجات ريكارنت كتير زي جرانيور ديستروفي زي الهربيتك اي امتى العيان خلاص يعني هو العيان اللي عنده مثلا ستيم سيل فيري الاوكلر سيرفيس اللي دول هقول له لا ما تحاولش لان الهاي ريت اوف ريجكشن دوت عالي فما احاولش ابعته وادي له مثلا هوب هو مش ه... يعني مش هيستفيد منه السؤال الثاني البروفيسور دكتور محمود اسماعيل الميرر كراتو بروسيسز ايه الفرق بينها وبين الفول سيكنس كراتو بروسيسز زي بوستين كراتو بلاست يعني هو which I think is avoid sir in uh, in this uh, yeah, surgery yeah okay thank you dr hand for your great questions so i have also a slide about that in uh, the complication but dr hatem okay هو بس انا 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 بس عايز اوضح سؤال ثاني معلش يعني حضرتك بتقولي امتى ما بعتش العيان انت ما حولكش العيان ك... انا نون ريفراكتيف انت ما حولكش العيان واقول له ان الكونيا بتاعتك نو هوبنج فور كيراتوبلاستي يا اوكي بوستيرو سيجمنت اي نو ذا بوستيرو سيجمنت انديكيشن ذا كويستشن وين وين اي وين يو هاف بيشنتس ويز ويز كورنيال اوباسيتي اند ذا كورنيال فاسكولاريزيشن هو هو از ا بيشنت Uh, you will transfer to the cornea unit or the cornea clinic and the hoe is not. This is a yeah. question. In case yeah. of cornea vascularization. Okay, this, this question also, Dr. Hatem, I, we will cover together at the end. Uh, okay. okay. I, I will go but, now, Dr. Hen, I will but, go okay. now for covering uh, some of the complication, including the, your question or your okay. questions and, and the question of Dr. Ibrahim. So, so uh, for the sake of time, let me to start my presentation, which is not spoken presentation. Actually, it is uh, an interactive one to benefit and to get, to pick up the opportunity today of having our professor, the, the head of Cornea Unit and the head of the old department of thermology, Dr. Mahmoud Ismail, and also Dr. Gustavo, and my dear colleague, Staring cornea surgeons, Dr. Hatim and Dr. Asad Nouradi. So I will start my presentation now. As we are saying all the time, <clears throat> the corneal surgery is not just the, the procedure itself. But if you, if you uh, complete your uh, mission by, by following up your patient properly and competing all the difficulties and all the, the, um, the obstacles after the surgery, you will complete your presentation. Uh, my voice is here now for all. Dr. Rahmoud, you hear me now now? You hear me well now? Okay. So the complications of the PQP either intraoperative or postoperative. So the trephination related um, complication could be a, a, a one of the important and, uh, and the dangerous complication during surgery. How to avoid it? How to avoid the trephination related and the complication and how to do the trephination properly? Please, uh, Dr. Rahmoud, give, give us our, your tricks, tricks and tips about the trephination. If you are going to refine a, a keratoconus patient, be aware that you are not seeing the real center of the cornea because the Purkinje image is altered because of the cone. So one trick, one tiny trick you have to do uh, before applying the to make the center of the cornea in order to apply the terrifying with the hair cross of the terrifying on the center of the cornea, just slightly press on the cornea. Once you press on the cornea, the real image, you lower the, the keratoconus, uh, the K reading of the cornea, and you eliminate the keratoconus by pressing on the cornea. Once you have pressed on the cornea, the K reading of the cornea have changed to more, just let us say, more physiological K reading, more physiological keratometry. So the real center of the cornea will appear. Another tiny trick, you make four dots 
centration by making seven millimeter from the limbus from four from four cardinal uh, uh, hours, the four cardinal hours, and then you just in the center you put you apply. Actually, if you are doing uh, uh, a normal um, cornea, a normal K reading, you won't be having a big problem when you are refining the cord. Father, go ahead, Ahad. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the endothelial damage, how to avoid the endothelial damage while you are preparing the, your uh, donor graft. Doctor, when you are doing yes. the gonia graft uh, for penetrating keratoplasty, apply just a small amount of viscoelastic on the back of the cornea. Don't touch the endothelial side. Centralize. And the punching should be done one full pressure. Darb tragulun wahed. Yes. Pressure all through. Yeah. Don't try to make zigzag application on the back of the cornea. Otherwise, you have trimmed the dismiss membrane, and this might lead to later on uh, some kind <coughs> of tiny de uh, dismiss detachment, which is yeah. microscopic, and this will damage the endothelium later on on the on the patient's eye. Okay, thank you, sir. Dr. Gustavo, uh, when you <coughs> when you're gonna wash your graft be, before punching, uh, when you when you uh, when you uh, sorry, sorry yeah. can, can, can you repeat, please? Okay, do you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, th there is a measures uh, you you um, follow when you wash your graft, the whole graft before putting inside the punch to, to keep or to protect the endothelium from any trauma or damage? In, in, in addition to what said by Dr. Mahmoud? Yes, uh, so in the, for penetrant keratoplasty? Yeah, so yeah, when you, when, you, when you grasp the, the graft with the forceps and you are gonna washing the graft. No, uh, usually uh, I, it's easily to it's easily to wash the anterior surface of the graft. But okay. what would you do while you while you are washing the posterior surface of the graft to keep the endothelium safe? So before the implant, so I, yeah. I, I, I so usually I after uh, I avoid very much wash both sides. So you, you usually I take out the, the all the epithelium and and protect the endothelium the endothelium with the uh, dispersive viscoelastic and it's done. And is is this not too much watch. Okay. Not too much there is a, a special technique Dr. Hatton for that. Uh, no, I, I just don't know the endothelial side. I just want to the epithelial side, not the endothelial side. We, 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 yeah, we prefer to, to wash it from the preservative material or the preservative, preservative substance or to keep it clean from it. There, there is an, uh, 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 any recommendation for that, Dr. Mahmoud? Please mute it. Dr. Ahmoud, you are muted. You are muted, sir. You have one of two options. Either you cleanse the, the, the whole graft while you are catching it from the, from the part of the sclera. To put it aside. Just put it and remove it. Or you clean, as Dr. Gustavo has said, you clean the anterior surface thoroughly and the posterior surface you just put one or two drops on the posterior surface, gently, not, not flushing, just gentle dropping on the posterior surface of the cornea on the posterior side. Whatever you want, both of them are, are viable. Yeah, okay. Um, as you see, I'm uh, insisting to ask this question many times by, by different ways because I, I have seen a lot of surgeons who are washing directly by the syringe washing the posterior surface of the cornea. Flushing. 
yeah, yeah. which which is uh, traumatizing to the endothelium. So I prefer yeah. I prefer to to drip drops on the forceps, and this then we, we uh, these drops will go down slowly and gently on the back of the cord. Uh, thank you very much. The intraocular hemorrhage, I think it's related to the uh, improper refining, the, the over refining, which is not um, adjusted. So the refining may injure, may do injury of the iris and causing the intra, uh, intraocular hemorrhage. What about the vitreous loss in cases of triple procedure? This question for Dr. Assad. Yeah, we can avoid the uh, vitreous loss by uh, uh, making a high, uh, decrease the intraocular pressure before surgery. A good repair of observation uh, before surgery by uh, application of manitol, uh, hyperosmotic, hyperosmotic agent, manitol, Cedamex, yeah. uh, uh, acetazolamide, which is decreased the intraocular pressure. Good preparation of the patient before surgery can avoid these uh, complications. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. I can use, of course, uh, speculum, which is loose speculum, uh, so tense uh, speculum. Uh, good anesthesia of the patient by the anesthesiologist. A good anesthesia can make the patient relax and the intraocular pressure can be white. All these precautions can be done before surgery to, and during surgery to avoid the intraocular hemorrhage. Okay, thank you. Uh, Gusta, Gustavo, do you hear me? Please unmute yourself. We need when you uh, uh, do triple procedure. So the triple oh. procedure. Uh, uh, so it's uh, usually first. Uh, uh, I prefer to do the first the cataract, the phaco cataract. So if you can see to the, you, if you can see through the corner. To, to make a safe uh, surgery is, the, is the, my preferred technique. So you make a closed chamber phaco emboscation and, and then uh, implant is the normal phaco emboscation. And then you close the pupil with, the, with the, the medicine and then you open the corner and change the corner. It's, it's, the, the, it's the, best, uh, the, the best way if you can do this. If you, uh, you to improve the to improve the view through the the the, the corner, if it's very scarce, so you can take out all the epithelium. The, the usually is improve a lot the the cataract. Then you can make the cataract uh, in closed chamber, uh, and then finish the cataract and put the the IOL lens, fold up IOL lens, and you make the you give the one suture or two suture in the small uh, incision, and then you proceed the the PK. So other way, uh, uh, other way to make these these steps in this sequence, you can use a fibric optical from the vitrectomy machine inside the eye, or outside, or maybe inside the eye to make more clear, more light, then you can perform the, the cataract in the closed chamber and also to put the four double IO lens and then uh, make the suture of the, the incision and then you do the PK. So as you see, is I prefer the first you close chamber fragmentation, close the incision and make the PK. So if not possible, you open the sky, you go to the open sky, okay? Yeah. Okay. The, it's a good idea to, to do the cataract before removing the cornea, but it's not available at the time because most of, most of cases are with co, uh, with a corneal opacity. You cannot see. If you can see, even hardly to do the phaco, or you can use the endo eliminator to help your visualization. I will do, but it wouldn't be a problem to to do incisions inside the cornea. It will, it will interfere with the pressure, which is uh, uh, required for the good refination after that. Dr. Ahmoud, I think, uh, you, I think. I'm sorry, the question once again, uh, to, uh, to, uh, yeah, tell me the question again, please. Okay, okay, Dr. Gustavo said that we can do the FICO uh, before cutting the, the, the graft, but actually if we do main incision, 
for the FECO probe and side ports for the, the, the other probes. This will not interfere, or this wouldn't interfere after that with a good refination of the corneal graft? It shouldn't, Yarni, it shouldn't. There is a lot of training also to perform uh, cataract. I'm sorry, the, the computer is losing battery, uh, losing some of the battery. Uh, there is another trick to make good visualization when you are uh, uh, when, you, when you are doing cataract surgery in combination of graft. You make partial terrifination and uh, you remove a lot of uh, layers of the cornea, at least two thirds of the cornea. Then you will encounter uh, clear media that at least you can do the rexes. Like the, the, the rexes. Yeah. Yeah. If you do the rexes, at least you have safe uh, removal of the nucleus without um, tearing the, 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 the capsule. Okay, sir. Thank you. What, what do you prefer, Dr. Hatim, if you have uh, a case with needing trouble, a triple procedure to do rexes, even open sky or capsulotomy? Uh, I prefer to do rexes because it gives a better support in, in this case, not not an open, not not capsulotomy. And as Professor Dr. Mahmoud Smail said, uh, if we can do the middle of removal of the uh, of the cornea of the big cornea and do it in a closed chamber. It's better than open scar. Oh, okay, but but uh, you think that the situation is is always suitable for doing rexes? Not always, of course, not always. That, that, but that, as much as I can. Okay, okay, I know. But if you if you if you uh, if you find that the rexes will take time, you will go for the capsulotomy and removal of the whole nucleus. Um, oh. Will you and 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 you will you will implant the IL. Yeah. At, at, at once, uh, after oh. after uh, clearing the uh, cortical materials, right? Yeah, but I try to do it uh, into a bag, inside the bag. Yeah, inside the bag. But but uh, during this uh, steps, you will keep your speculum, the speculum in inside, in inside, or to remove it. No, I don't remove the speculum. As Dr. Asad said, I, I will choose a speculum which doesn't encounter pressure on the eye. Uh, okay, but if you, find, if you didn't find that, you will remove the speculum and use sutures or what to do? Excuse me, you mean I remove the speculum? Yes. In order not to go this chamber? Posterior uh, pressure. Posterior yeah. pressure. Yeah, I'll, I will go for that, but I think it will be very difficult. I didn't face it. Okay, Dr. Asad, do you, do you have a cases uh, like that? Yes, I have uh, one case like that. I remove the speculum and I uh, make lead suture. Yes. Power lead suture and lower yeah. lead suture. And yeah. It's an alternative if you don't have the, the, the proper uh, speculum for this situation. The, the leads, upper and lower lead sutures will be good alternative for that. Okay, let's go uh, for the post-operative uh, complication. And Dr. Gustavo, if you if you have a patient with uh, if you have a patient with a shallow anterior chamber at the first or the second morning after PKP, how to evaluate and uh, uh, how to define the problem and to ma how to manage. So the so you should you should know uh, if there is a, a acumulus uh, volume. So you should you should see if the all is okay, the all the suture is okay, and and you 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 should have the all the surgery. Maybe you should uh, try again and put some bubbles or. Uh, if I understand, so you, you talk about this, the, the anterior chamber is high uh, uh, you should you should see all the sutures. And then like this, you should see if the, for the, the contrast, if there is uh, archaeomorphs going out, so you should, you should be very careful, see everything like this and make some bubble. You can, you can have fake this suture uh, because it's very, uh, 
early pause operatory and then you should so go this way okay uh, as in this figure on the right side up the, there is the state lamp scan the slit, the slit light uh, found that the, there's no almost there is no space between the cornea and the graft then there's anterior shadow anterior chamber so I think we will check first if there is increased or lowered intraocular pressure to know if there is a, a, a leak, wound leak, or other factor like the pupillary block, glaucoma or other uh, factors. So we, we also have to do sedal test, which will diagnose and will cut the problem, we will we'll find the, the, the problem. Uh, using trial fluorescein stain. If there's loose sutures at the site of leak, you will re-suture immediately or to do something before Dr. Uh, Gustavo again. <clears throat> if, you, if you find in your clinic that there is bone leak by the serial test, you, you are putting, you have, you have put already the contact lens, right? What, what to do if you, if you don't have the, the, the facility now to, to go for the operation, for the OR, what to do if, you, if, you, if this patient will wait for the, the, the second morning, for one day more, it, it will be safe, the, the, the eye will be safe, or to do something in, in the clinic? So, of course, you should, you should to go to the operating room and make this, huh? uh, and make all the suture. Uh, what you talk about if if there is no way to go to the operating room yeah i'm 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 talking about the uh, uh, our, our the, the day life practice we 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 uh, may have this problem in the clinic but we ha can go for the operation the second day not on the same day so there is a measure so, to go inside the clinic your clinic to do something yeah yeah you can you can you can of course, put contact lens. You can use a, you can use a glue. Uh, you can you you should go. You should you should push uh, the IOP more lower. So in the lower in basal lower, uh, if there is no too low, uh, I think is is this way. Uh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Do you want to add any comment? Uh, as uh, Dr. Gustavo said, uh, I'll, I'll uh, put a contact lens, I patch the eye, I dilate the eye, I, I dilate at maximum the eye, dilatation can help in reforming some of the anterior chamber. And of course, as soon as possible, uh, don't try to make funny things in the, in the clinic because injecting air inside the anterior chamber in the clinic, this is heroic and I don't advise anybody to do it. Okay, sir. Uh, then the question, when and what to do? What to do? Uh, we 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 um, we had it now, but when to do that? I mean, when to be hurry to reform the anterior chamber? If there is as shall shallowness, as possible. No, yes. no, as soon as I, possible. I, yes. I, no, no. I mean, I mean, sir, what's the grade of the shallowness to to be hurry? If there is contact, or if there is a grade one, grade two, grade three. If there is a space between the, the iris or the pupil and the cornea, can you wait for the spontaneous re reformation? Okay. T tell us about, yeah. Yes. There is a small trick that you do in order to know that this patient can wait or cannot wait. If the patient is uh, touching, if the cornea is touching the, the iris, this is definitely you have to reform that tissue. If the patient has very, very shallow anterior chamber, but not touching, if you manage to dilate, if you put the contact lens and you put dilate, maximum dilatation to the patient and the iris response, this means that the patient can wait without research. But if there is no dilatation and no improvement after dilatation, if there is mid dilatation and there is no improvement of mid dilatation after mid dilatation, of the depth of the anterior chamber, this means that the patient still will need resuture. Yes, sir. Thank you. Perfect. 
uh, I will back again to this slide to ask um, uh, our, uh, my speakers today about the Hesburgh Barren Vacuum Corneal Tree Fine. What was it, the number of turns of the tree fine uh, as regard to the, the, the corneal thickness? Uh, it's, it's, it's significant to measure the corneal thickness before going to the keratoplasty. Yes or no? Okay, if you are going to do DALC surgery in deep anterior lamellar, so it's very wise to know the thickness of the cornea that you are treating. And getting to the same question, how many turns you are able to do for the cornea? In a rough calculation, each quarter means 25 microns. Each, each quarter? Each turn? Quarter, yes. Each, each, each quarter. quarter, yes. So one complete turn is about one and ten, one ten microns. One ten. So yes. a very thin cornea, like 250 to 300 micron cornea in the cradle corners, that means six to seven thirds, you are able to make, make it to the 80, 90% of the depth of the cornea. Each one of us has his own calculation. If, asked, if you ask Dr. Gustavo now, he will tell you another kind of calculation because it depends on your personal experience. Now, the Hesburg Baron Vacuum Cornea Trifine is manufactured by several companies. And that's why the explanation, each, each surgeon has his own complication, his own calculation also. So Moria does it, HD does it, there is an Indian replica that is doing it, and uh, a lot of, uh, JetMed is doing it. JetMed is the original one that was fa fabricating this. So there is a lot of companies doing the Hesper one to refine, so it might be different from one hand to another according to the company provided. Awesome. Okay, okay, sir, thank you. Uh, uh, please, we will. Has uh, uh, it Okay, okay. Just, uh, just a note about this slide, which is the suturing. Uh, you, you mentioned about, you mentioned the types of suturing of the cornea, but I want to know the the sign of the proper suturing, the proper path of suture from the donor to the recipient bed. What's the sign? When I see it, I, I will know that I am on the right track. What's your recommendation? Yeah, what's your recommendation first, Dr. Mahmoud? Okay, in my hand, the best suturing technique is combined, interrupted, and continuous. Eight interrupted sutures and one continuous suture. The eight interrupted sutures, they give you the time of manipulation. If they give you the tools to manipulate the wound to avoid high astigmatism. And the continuous suturing give you the regularity. Meaning, you might have low grades of astigmatism, but irregular cornea. The best corrected patient, the best corrected visual acuity of the patient is low. However, you might have high astigmatism but the regular astigmatism with the help of continuous suture. This is the, the whole philosophy. Now, we go to the suturing uh, signs that you can see on slit lamp in the post-operative, that you can see, uh, actually, actually you should see it intraoperative. There is a small trick you can do, either to grab the cratoscope to see if you are in even surgery, or a small bubble in the tear chamber after closing the pupil, after myoticing the pupil, using myotics to the pupil, and this air bubble will help you to assure whether it is oval, seen oval, or it's, it's almost rounded, so you can judge on your graft uh, uh, traction. Now, we go to the coaptation, which is something else. Coaptation means Almost both tissues are on the surface alike because when we suture the graft, you are taking care of the surface only. Inside, one of them is thicker than the other or one of them is not matching with us, but you are caring for the surface. 
what you are doing is to appro approximate the surface of the donor to the surface of the recipient. And this can be easily, you can pass by a small cannula or spatula from one side, the donor side, to the graft. If there is a step, that means that this graft is overrided. And overriding is not a good thing. Yes, sir. There is what's called the arrowhead sign. The arrowhead yes. sign that you are passing through the decimates membrane. With, with, you, 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 it's it's right. It's the no, it's the this recommended. This is during the suturing. Yeah. Ah, this is I, during the suture. You I, see I, the the arrow. Yeah. After you did the suture, you have to pass the spatula. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Then we will go for these uh, photos, where which um, which show a different photos, different situations for the the, uh, the corneal vascularization and the corneal uh, dot. This, uh, there is a, a distributed dot all over the cornea. Uh, what do you think about this uh, uh, figure, sir? Down left. The, this is a sign of corneal graft rejection or not? Dr. Uh, Gustavo? Uh, yes, uh, yes it is. Uh, and you should, you should, you should uh, look for also for some move aid, something like that. But uh, so you can, we can, I cannot see the very thin slit lamp photo in the down left you talk about the down left yes the the down left it's a sign for rejection or not yeah yes this one yes yes you, yeah you... which type of of rejection endothelial stromal epithelial endothelial endothelial yeah, yeah endothelial yes. rejection yes 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 sir so, uh, there's an indication to compete for this rejection with uh, heavy steroids. The upright, this corneal vascularization, it's a kind of rejection or suture related. For me, I'm sorry, Hassan. Yeah, yeah, it's for you. Okay, the up right. Yeah, yeah, the up figures, either right or left, this corneal vascularization. It's yeah. just it's just for a reaction to the stages or as some step of um, some stage of corneal rejection. So it's a it's a corneal rejection uh, for so it's it's not uh, uh, acute so it's coming from some days or weeks something like that. So it's it's you can see the. Uh, also, you can see the, the, the have a vascularization, but also in the corner, in the host corner, you can see the line here. And uh, in the quarter, uh, the quarter up, you can see the line in between the more clear and more dark corner. So usually this, you, you can see also the, how thin is the, is the suture here in the left. And yeah. so this, this corner is a little, so, uh, more time. So usually we take out the, the suture after one year in the transplant, the PK transplant. Usually after one year PK transplant, is okay. very often I, I take out of them because yeah. it's, it's the, 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 the veins coming from through the, the, the suture. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gustavo. Dr. Reza, do, do you see that this stitch is a tight one? So it's, it, it, um, it, it formed this line. Oh, it's a cause of this line, which is present in the upright figure, the tight suture, or not? Sorry, Hassan. Uh, so, uh, oh, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, okay. No problem, Gustavo. Yeah, Assad, complete, yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I think it is the tight suture, and uh, it's inframed from the, the side, from the nasal side, I think, from the nasal side. The stitch is yeah. inflamed and swollen. The cornea is always swollen and inflamed. Okay, okay. And you 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 may think that uh, removal of these stitches will stop the progression of the new vascularization, as Dr. Gustavo said. 
it will it will be removed to uh, um, stop progression of the neovascularization. Depending upon the time, with the whole liver cardiovascular was done, if, uh, if it takes a month or more, I think the removal of uh, removal of part of these stitches can re can decrease vascularization and inflammation. Okay, what what what's the time at which I can remove the stitches or or some of it? If there is any problem related to the stitches, I can remove after how many months? I can I can remove, Doctor Hatem. Uh, I think, uh, minimally speaking, uh, three months if, if there is any problem with vascularization. But I have another option for that uh, why we should uh, try to inject anti vegetative subconjunctively to decrease the active vascularization because it is active, um, more beneficial on newly growing blood vessels. Okay, yeah, yeah. you have presented that in your presentation, it's, it's a good idea for that, but it will work for the neovascularization, just yeah. neovascularization itself. But if this neovascularization related to the immunological reaction, it will, it will do or not? Uh, okay, uh, if it is, it will, I think it will do, but a uh, limited effect, but this is the only option we have, because in your, uh, this, in this cornea, this vascularization is continuous and you can't remove it so early. I think yeah. so. Okay. Do you think? Do you think so, Dr. Rahmoud? Yes. Uh, let me say, uh, agree with Dr. Gustavo that they are all of them signs of rejection. But in the lower left one, I will go for anterior stromal and inferior rejection more likely. But as he said, the slit lamp is not clear. Regarding removal of the sutures, uh, this is you have to treat these patients as cases of rejection first. And then you start selectively remove some of the sutures that are related to the new vascularization. For instance, if we try to remove the sutures in this moment, this will be a lot of bleeding and you won't gain anything. First, you have to antidote the, the case of rejection first. You have to combat rejection because this is yes. a very stiff, severe re rejection, especially the one on the right hand side up. Uh, and this is the vessels entered the, the graft and uh, it is already uh, branching inside the graft and it's, 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 it will be lost if you leave it like this. Okay, okay, okay sir. Thank you. Th th this is a different figures for different situations related to the stitches, either tight stitch or a rotating stitch with uh, an infection around and there is a contact as, um, a rotating stitch with the back of the eyelid leading to giant papillary, uh, giant, sorry, giant papillary. Uh, and in on all this situation, you will manage the stitches um, according to the situation itself. And we have to um, differentiate between the immune suture infiltrates and the infectious suture infiltrates. <clears throat> as shown in the figures, the immune suture infiltrates, they are multiple and small, while the infectious one is solitary. The immune suture infiltrates will be only on the host side, while the infectious can occur in the host and the graft sites, both sides. The immune suture infiltrates as an inflammatory or immune reaction it will be uh, not associated with epithelial defect, while the infectious will be associated with epithelial defect. Let's go for the epithelial defect, which is a common problem in crabblasty. Uh, and may, may deceive some of us to be diagnosed as a sign of graft, graft rejection or graft failure. Uh, the question is for Dr. Gustavo about the epithelial, the persistent epithelial defect after keratoplasty in the first weeks after. What, what, what to do? Uh, so uh, you 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 should take so you should put contact lens bandage contact lens and very so the hydro the, uh, the silicone hybrid contact lens is more we 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 did a research between these two kind of contact lens in FTPRK and they improve the hep the the PRK so improve the uh, heptalization is very different and very fast 
in the hybrid contract lens with the silicon contract lens, the more uh, uh, de the decay for the oxygen through that is much faster. So you should use this and should use a very uh, uh, eye drop with no, uh, with no conservants. Preservatives? And you should, yeah, with no preservatives, every, uh, so anyway, anyway, with this guide patient of normal patient, I only use uh, uh, no preservant, uh, uh, no preservant uh, eye drops. You should see if the IOP, if this patient is uh, not higher or not, because it can uh, difficult the hepatization out. Uh, because it is more is more uh, is more liquid inside the cornea and also going up and also going to the basal uh, the basal area that the epithelium can can fix well, it. Well, so well, you should. Gustavo, will you will you give the same the, the usual dose of a steroid or you will decrease it? You you will reduce the, the frequency. The, yeah, in the case of epithelial defect, you will reduce the dose of the steroid, or you will keep it. It's how long? How long time is the this transplant? Uh, the long time of of, of this eye, of this operation. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, it was two weeks after. Two weeks? No, I I don't I don't decrease the the I don't decrease the the the, the steroid to, yeah. to uh, I don't decrease too early. Uh, I don't be afraid uh, with this uh, epithelium defect too early. Uh, you should vary uh, in the way that you should protect the the rejection. So this is yeah. more important. So so, the, the so you so you will consider it as one as as one of the signs of the early graft rejection or graft failure this this is this is a question of uh, of yes, uh, our yes, dear audience yes yes, yes. i try yeah. to protect this way and this yeah. time and, and improve the the improve the with the eye drop no preservation and contact lens and try try to see iop also try to oh. see iop okay perfect thank you well, uh, dr asad what about the autologous serum eye drops did, did you try it before with such patient? Yes, I tried it, with, uh, but in real cases, in case of uh, uh, severe dry eye or uh, suspected case of rejection due to dryness or due to autoimmune disease, I try it in some cases and get good results. Okay, uh, good results, even with, with, with such epithelial defect? Uh, in the defect, I have an, uh, an opinion about the disease. Yes. I can stop the uh, steroid dexamethasone or prednisone. I can shift the patient uh, to fluor fluoromycelone after application of bandage uh, contact lens. And I can, I can give the patient uh, through systemic steroid. Systemic steroid prednisone, uh, one milligram per kg per day uh, until healing uh, occurs. And uh, after that, I can give the patient prednisolone or dexamethasone. I can stop it for one week and shift the patient to fluoromycelone, which is, can be good, give us a good result. Okay, thank you. Do you have any comment, Dr. Hatim, about that? No, no, no. I, I agree with Dr. Asad uh, on slowing or on changing the type of steroid. And in this case, uh, I think autologosium, I have used it in case of a side effect, not after cataplasty, but in other cases, and it gives a, a good prognostic factor. It was good. Okay, thank you. What about our professor, Dr. Mahmoud? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Hussain? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, in a case like you have presenting, this is an infectious keratitis. This is not an ulcer, just an ulcer. Be careful when you are treating a corneal ulcer after graft. If it's an infectious keratitis, you have to treat it as infectious keratitis with anti, uh, antibacterial or antifungal as, uh, in, uh, according to the case. Now, 
autologous serum or PRP is a double sword arm. That's a lahzu If you are um, if you are applying such element to the cornea and there is infection, you have you have a flare up of the infection and you will lose the eye as a whole. So be careful. Okay, sir, we I, we cannot hear you. But, but we, we, will, we have to consider and put uh, in our mind that... When you are using autologous serum or PRP, no. Okay, sir, but uh, actually no. uh, it's, it's, an, it's a new... Um, uh, 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 yeah, it's a new raised idea about this picture to be infectious keratitis. We are dealing with as a persistent corneal epithelial defect. So there's no infiltrations, there's no other signs of the inf infectious keratitis. Look here, Dr. Hassan. Look here, Dr. Hussein. Uh, a lot of cases of persistent epithelial defect, low-grade infection, and you are treating them because of the steroids, they are not flaring up. Once you stop the steroids and start treating the infection, you will know by then that there is, will be infiltration. The infiltration will, have, will appear after stopping the steroids. Yes. For instance, if a case of infectious keratitis comes to you and the patient is already prescribed by steroids, you have to, uh, to address the patient carefully that once you stop the steroids, the eye will go angry because he will think that the treatment that you gave him have made his eye worse. Yes. Be careful of this. Yeah, okay, because the inflammatory signs will, will be... The inflammatory, the infiltrate will, will appear to you. In the case of infectious keratitis of a graft patient who already is under steroids, there is no infiltrate. That's the big problem about it. So you have to suspect a persistent epithelial defect that there is a subclinical infection. Now, start by antibiotics, lubricants cover the eye, see the patient after three or four days. Recovery of the epithelial defect in, in the graft is not as uh, rapid as virgin cornea. It will take time. You start by this, you start by contact lens, patching the eye, so long the eye is clean and there is no infection, you are in a good step. Now, if this persists, you go for autologous serum. If this persists, you go for amniotic membrane. And if all of these measures have failed, you know by now that the graft is failing. And one of the signs of graft failing graft is persistent epithelial defect. Thank yeah. You. Uh, thank you, sir, for this uh, 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 storming uh, ideas of the mind of our minds about new, uh, to to deal in different way with such uh, condition, uh, and this could be one of the signs of the primary failure of the craft. We discussed about the, the, the corneal uh, rejection, epithelial stromal endothelium. So I will skip to the graft failure, and this was the question of Dr. Fathi and Dr. Hand about the graft failure in case of stem cell deficiency and the severe ocular surface disease, herpes zoster, and also the, her the herpes simplex and the her herpes zoster. HZ is uh, standing for herpes zoster and Hussam Ziad at the same time. So, uh, Dr. Gustavo, uh, if, if you have a, a case with the stem cell deficiency, a limbal stem cell deficiency, uh, do, do, you, do you think that the graft, if you implant, if you implant a graft in such patient, th this graft will sur survive or not? And how to define that? So it's the, it's the, it's the uh, bad scenario, okay? So yeah. uh, it's like that you see in the key pro, uh, uh, in Kipro talk, so if you lose the, if you lose a lot of part of the limbos, so it's a very bad for the your 
your results in the transplant. So very bad. So yeah, okay. It, okay. Okay, if, if, you, if you look at the, the, the down, the, the most down right figure, the number five figure, this was a PKP in a patient, old, very old age, about 75 years old. I have implanted the cornea and the, the, the cornea um, was well for about five months. And then in this, in this the sixth month started to uh, give to to um, started to to be failed from the superior starting with the superior part with extensive vascularization and opacification, and when I back to the mind first, I I I remember that the stem cell in this patient was not well enough to put this graft. So I took the lesson from from this case not to graft any patient with limb stem cell deficiency, either to correct the problem first before going to, to graft or to choose another option, right? What, what, what are the, the options in your opinion, Dr. Mahmoud? Primary graft, this is not a primary graft failure. This is a failing graft. Yeah. Okay. Yes. A failing graft can be a rejection or failing graft due to inferior pump failure, meaning that the Ethereum at the moment of the implant was reasonable but not good and by the autoimmune reactions subclinical uh, doses of rejection and uh, the trauma of surgery itself all of the endothelium are failing so in the case of stem cell failure like this one that what does it mean the what is the stem cells the stem cells are the barrier against the conjunctivalization the conjunctiva yes. is invading the cornea. Yes. How the conjunctiva invades the cornea? By sending messengers. And this through the lymphatic channels, the leukotrienes reaches the, the limbus, from the limbus to the graft, and then follows the vascular vasculature, the new vessels that you have seen now. The new vessels attack the cornea, and it causes the haze formation that you have seen. If a case of primary stem, stem cell failure and the stem cells are not good at the beginning, you have to do one of two things. If you can do to the patient, if it's severe stem cell failure with dry eye, don't attempt grafting. And this is the question of Dr. Ibrahim. Yes. Doing, a, a stem, uh, doing a corneal transplant in a stem cell failure with dry eye, definitely it, you will lose the core, the graft. So it's better to go for keratoprothesis. But if it's uh, one or maximum two sectors of the eye losing the stem cells, then you go for the smallest graft diameter possible. Don't big, make big graft. Otherwise, you will be attacked easily. To be away from the limbs. As much as you can. Yeah. This is the only measure. Follow up the patient carefully. Give him low doses of fluoromethylone. You have to um, follow the patient with an uh, immunologist because this patient will need uh, in several occasions cyclosporins by uh, by any means, systemically. And you, uh, we ophthalmologists, we cannot dose the patient for uh, systemic uh, the, 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 uh, Yeah, okay, systemic uh, therapy about that. But let me, sir, uh, uh, ask you about our work in the master and MD thesis about the stem cell transplant. <laughs> and we um, are still hoping to, to find a way for that someday. Uh, if, the, if, the patient, if this patient has a normal stem cell configuration in the other eye, can I take a graft from the conjunctival and the limbal side, uh, incorporating the stem cell and put it in the superior part of the limbus here, and after six months, I can go for transplant if there is a good barrier? Yes. 
Yes, if it's only one eye, it's, it's the stem cells. It's if, like in alka, like in alkali burn. Yeah. In alkali burn, one eye, one eye is attacked. The other eye is completely healthy. Then you can take uh, four to five millimeters from the uh, from the corneal limbal zone and yeah. transplant. In okay. Egypt, we have a problem of drug. Probably Dr. Gustavo doesn't know this. We have a problem of trachoma. More, most of the patients had previous trachoma infection. So the upper limbus, uh, the, the, the 12 o'clock limbus in Egypt is not very healthy, unfortunately. I think in Brazil too. There's you have trachoma in Brazil, uh, Dr. Gustavo? Conoces el uh, chlamydia? Yeah, yes, yes, a lot, uh, a lot of chlamydia uh, and trachoma. So in the, some part of Brazil, especially in the north, it's a lot, usually now, today, nowadays. I think we have a lot of sharing uh, problems and, and, and geographical features. Uh, uh, okay. What about the, the, the figure number six, Dr. Asad? There is a graft failure too? Yes, there's a graft failure, but was, there is the signs of inflammation. I think... Uh, infectious I, carotides? I think in the infectious carotides, there is a signs of ciliary injections and the ang is always angry. Yeah. But not, uh, not graft failure. Yeah. Okay. But but if it's if if this uh, condition uh, treated well, it will pass. It will complete. No problem with it. Okay. The number eight, Doctor Hatem. We are about to finish now. Okay. Uh, I, I I don't see it with very well, but I think it is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's nominal keratitis, so uh, yeah. it's recurrent herpetic keratitis in in a graft, okay, which which is one of the in uh, the which is one of the uh, the uh, very significant points to to be considered if 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 we are going to graft a patient with past history of herpetic keratitis, what's the time to wait after the last attack? At least three months. Three months. Le le let's uh, ask Dr. Gustavo. Dr. Gustavo, what, what, what time to, to pass after the last active attack of herpetic keratitis? If, if we have an, a corneal opacity and preparing the patient for grafting, what, what the time to wait after the last activity of the herpetic keratitis? So, uh, so the herpetic keratitis, so we usually uh, use uh, medicine before, so use a... Uh, Systemic cyclovir. Exactly, two or three months before, uh, and usually more six months after. Uh, you, 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 can, you can see if the, this patient, how much if you have, this information. So, how how many times they they have uh, 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 this kind? So this uh, how many times they have achieved uh, whatever they it's opaque or not. But before of this, it, it's a very hard activity or not. Then you can then you can feel and manage in how many times you use the medicine. But you should use the medicine. Uh, uh, systemic EV overall. Systemic prophylaxis for six months. Exactly. Then I go for surgery. At least six months. I even may wait for one year uh, under a, a prophyla a systemic prophylaxis. Okay, the, the Hatim, you had a question from Dr. Hind about the corneal neovascularization. So if you have a corneal neovascularization to, to close this, this uh, entity, if she had a corneal, cornea vascularized with corneal opacity and the patient seeking for keratoplasty, 
Okay. Which patient? Which patient will be sent for your clinic? Okay. If we have a patient with cornea vascularization, first we have one more one item we have to check. Yes. First of them is how many quadrants are affected. Is this four, uh, four quadrants, four quadrants, or two quadrants, or three quadrants? If we have four quadrants, mostly we have lumbar stem cell deficiency, and in this case, this is not a good case for keratoblast. This is a good case for keratoblast. This is not keratoblast. Yes. Second thing is the depth of the blood pieces. It is superficial pieces or deep pieces. Mostly deep pieces is have a poor prognosis for keratoplasty, so it is more for keratoblast. This is number two. Number three is uh, what is the origin of these uh, blood pieces? It is conjunctival or lumbar. Uh, I think it is. This will differ more in this uh, case where to go keratoblast or keratoblast. I think this is. Uh, what yeah. to, to, it, okay. It's it's very good. Uh, answer. Thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, uh, summarize it in two points. If this neovascularization is related to the limbal deficiency, this patient is not candidate for the, the normal keratoplasty for another option. But anyway, Dr. Hand will send the patient to you. I, 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 I mean, we have an option. We have a lot of options for this patient. If, if there's a potential for vision, uh, this patient will be candidate for some technique, okay? But okay. if there is no potential for vision for another problem in the posterior segment or the optic nerve or the retina, uh, yeah. okay, we will check for by, by, by electrophysiological studies and then decide. But if there is a localized spot vascularization like post hepatic or in, infectious vascularization, in, uh, 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 like the bacterial keratitis, which is healed with corneal ulceration, the corneal vascularization. This vascularization is caused by the infection in this part of cornea, but it's not related to the stem cell. So you will treat the corneal vascularization like by coronary or other options, and then go for the keratoplasty, which is the PKP. Okay. Okay. Uh, am, I, am I right, Dr. Mahmoud? Okay, the, uh, the, the last question about the coronary vascularization, about the coronary, do, 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 you, do you cauterize the vascularization, but please mute yourself, sir, uh, unmute, uh, about the coronary cauterization of the, of the blood vessels in the same session or time before going for the graft. Unmute Hatim, Dr. Hatim, unmute Dr. Rahmoud, please. Okay. I used to do uh, pre-setting, uh, uh, yani, uh, cauterization, diode laser, or by fine uh, needle uh, cauterization. And nowadays I don't do this. I do on the spot through the conjunctiva with the endo uh, cautery, uh, endo cautery, uh, Probe. I do cauterization to the main vessels coming from outside the limbus, the feeder vessels. Yes, yes, sir. But, uh, the if, but the injection should be a uh, time before. In, uh, uh, if, you do, if, you, if you want to do uh, VGF, anti-VGF uh, injection, be careful that this is just a, a temporary measure. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Then, what about the postoperative astigmatism? I, I think we discussed this point, which is uh, the intraoperative measure to decrease astigmatism, the early postoperative, and the late postoperative after three months. Uh, Dr. Rahmoud uh, yeah, showed that in his presentation. The question here, the laser vision correction is one of the uh, uh, options to correct the postoperative residual astigmatism or residual um, Error, either spherical or astigmatism. The LASIK or to PRK, to do flap or flapless. PRK, definitely. Uh, Dr. Assad? PRK, no flap. <laughs> no yeah. flap, okay. Hatem? Same, PRK, no flap. Gustavo? Yes, also. PRK or LASIK to correct the post uh, BKB astigmatism? 
So PRK. PRK. I am the only one who did a LASIK after uh, after cross you, you sh you, Yeah, you should you should you should see. So it's not one fit all. Okay, you should see the 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 degree. Né? It's a higher degree or not degree. Uh, it's yeah. the corner is is too too uh, irregular or not. Uh, yeah. If the if the the keratoplasty center is a good diameter, everything is it's okay. Or it's a very it's, it's a little more uh, worse. But uh, uh, so you can use both. But you can see the you can see the age of the patient, and, and but it's no problem about the lower degree uh, and the cornea is not too is not too higher, but. For, for for sure, not microkeratoma. Yeah, okay, thank you. As uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Gustavo said, we have to uh, check many points before going for that. And as Dr. Mahmoud said before, while you are young, you will, you will be brave because you are still ignorant about the, the misery. <laughs> but I have done uh, around six cases of LASIK, post, post, over, post PKP for the astigmatism and for the myopia. Uh, aimed at uh, a larger, uh, a big diameter flap, including the graft and, and the, the recipient bed. Uh, fortunately, they, they went well up till now. But I, uh, I will check the mind because most one of them, uh, I had a residual of minus two, minus three astigmatism, and I corrected the, this residual on with the femto. Um, EK, stigmatic keratotomy, which corrected up to 70% from the residual part. Uh, but put on consideration the PRK, the first line, and LASIK, because I have done it, I, I may say it, it, it could be done. Um, manual or femto EK, we discussed about that. The regraft, at which case you, you will regraft? Even the the graft is is, is not rejected. Primary graft failure is the best case to regraft because the the, the, the immune system did not yet act, be activated. So you can regraft it if this is the primary graft failure. But if uh, uh, it is not, it's previously rejected with new vessels. You have to take care of time. You have to leave some time before to give time to the, the new vessel to be regressed and to evaluate once again the case, if it's possible or not possible to regress. Okay, thank you, sir. Finally, the final slide, we will uh, uh, end with it. Uh, the options for such case, it will collect what, uh, what we have said about that. This case is not candid for uh, the PKP. It's for the keratoprothesis. And so we, it was shown by both Dr. Gustavo and Dr. Mahmoud. Uh, but l let me ask about the corneal, the corneal scleral graft. What's your experience about it? If this patient is with good posterior segment. The corneal scleral graft is done in cases of anterior staphyloma. It's a heroic surgery, Dr. Hussain. And it's not so easy as you think because the patient will develop glaucoma in 100% of cases. Corneus clear graft is more or less uh, the last chance for patients who are suffering from huge anterior staphyloma. But yes. in normal cases like this, nobody will do corneus clear graft. And uh, in a case like this, you have to wait a lot of time before evaluating because it's still active. Patient is not the eye is not quite yet. Yeah. Okay. But if you if you have patient like 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 this patient, but with melting of the cornea, there is no bed to bot the keratoprothesis. What, what, uh, what, what do you consider the the cornea scleral graft in such case? This is a tectonic surgery. Yes, this is a tectonic surgery. Yeah. Okay. I, I have done it just once, and I'm following the patient four months up till now. It's still working. There's no glaucoma because the patient had the choroidal effusion with a low tension. I'm trying to, to, to get the high tension till now, but it's, it's going well. It's, it's, go, it's still go, going well. 
after three months. There is no rejection. I hope, I hope to complete. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, but uh, I have to apologize for Dr. Gustavo because uh, we plan to, to give to, for him to give us to give to us another uh, presentation about the coronary reshaping. But unfortunately, the time is is out and out, and it's too late in Egypt now. So uh, you will give us another opportunity to have you in another session, for, especially for the corneal reshaping and show your magic work in, in, in this subject. Thank you, Dr. Gustavo Victor from Brazil. Uh, and, and my dear friend, I-, I Once hope again, we thank you. Uh... For your participation. Once again, thank you, Arsene. Thank, thank you, Dr. Mahmoud, for giving us the time, and I know uh, that you are tired. Thank you, Dr. Assad, Dr. Hatim, for uh, your participation, your time, and making Thanks, this Arsene. meeting a uh, successful one. Thank you for all, and very good night. Have a good night. On behalf of the department, uh, Dr. Gustavo, let me thank you on behalf of our department. Thank you for participating. Obrigado for the trabajo, and thank you very much. And also on behalf of Thank the, you very much. the Egyptian Ophthalmological Society, which is in, uh, which uh, this meeting. This is included in the program, yes. Yeah, in the program. And uh, 